George Bland, uh, any kind of weather was good to throw in. Uh, let's talk about Carolina now. They seem to be back on track, back about where they were at the end of last year. Well, they're back on track in that they've won their last three games. Uh, their quarterback, Kerry Collins, is, is finally coming back from that injury, and he's starting to look comfortable again. They have an interesting running back in uh, uh, Freddie Lane. He's a rookie, undrafted, free agent. Last week against the Oakland Raiders, he scored three touchdowns, and this guy is really a lot of fun to watch. But when you talk about the Carolina Panthers and Dom Capers, it's all about efficiency, playing well as a team, not having any turnovers, but getting turnovers, field position, you know, a lot of zone blitzes, confuse the offense, those types of things. And almost any team, any coach we talk to, talks about having balance when they have the ball on offense. And Denver certainly appears to have that balance. Well, you know, like Sam Mills, the linebacker for Carolina, was saying last night, he said, what a team this Denver Bronco is. He said, if they get ahead, well, then they have Terrell Davis, and he just pounds the ball and just runs and runs and runs, and you can't stop him. If they get behind, then they have John Elway to throw it and come from behind, and there's nobody better than doing that. And in talking to Mike Shanahan, their head coach, he said, if we have any problem, it's on defense. We're just giving up too many big plays. We haven't played a perfect game yet, and that's what we're looking for. Far from perfect weather, but coming up, it's the Carolina Panthers and the Denver Broncos from Mile High Stadium. And John and I will be back for the opening kickoff when Fox NFL Sunday continues. Tonight, it'll be one revealing night. Will Homer Simpson lead his team to the championship? Let's try out the new cup. Is Bobby Hill the next supermodel? You look too fantastic. Oh. Then, it took 100 episodes to reach the unthinkable. What happened there? She's dying. Now, the one thing Agent Scully needs to survive comes with a high price. Quit the FBI. Come work for me. The X-Files 100th episode. So many secrets. Just one box. We're back at Erickson Stadium where we're down in the final seconds of the game and it's still tied. The kick's high. And... Erickson Mobile Phone. Catch the excitement. And countdown. Jason Elam is number one just getting the ball and again John Madden was saying a moment ago that one of the problems today is going to make sure that ball is dry. You know and in the NFL now they have a rule that they have 36 brand new footballs available per game 18 per half so they have 18 brand new footballs out here in the field now. Bates is back deep for Carolina. A battle of special teams between these two would come out just about even. Michael Bates got great speed. Bates outside the 30, about the 31. He's happy with that. The Carolina Panther offense led by three-year veteran Kerry Collins. Brockermeyer, Campbell, Garcia, Skrepinak and David Garrido in front of him. They've become a very good offensive line. Lane Green, Carrier and Caruth wide. Wesley Walls, the very reliable tight end of Kerry Collins. First and 10 Carolina at their own 31. Collins started to spin and dropped the ball in the middle of the spin. The Denver defense. There have been some long, some big plays against them. Williams, Anavasa, Trailer and Hasselback in front. Mobley, Aldridge, and Romanowski, the linebackers. And the secondary, Gordon, Atwater, Braxton, and Crockett. Second and 13. Collins gets to his running back, Fred Lane, who gets negative yardage. Well, a week ago, they didn't know who Fred Lane was, and I think he sneaked up on the Oakland Raiders and, as I said, scored three touchdowns against them and made some great runs. I mean, the Raiders just couldn't tackle him. You look at what he did. 28 rushes, 147 yards, 
three touchdowns, that 147 yards and three touchdowns were Carolina Panther records. That little piece of Mile High Stadium stuck in his helmet. Third and 14, three wide receivers. Lane's gone to the sideline. Walls is the motion man. Collins took advantage of the movement by the Broncos. Johnny Greer, the referee. That was one of those situations where the defense jumps and it was really a, a free play for Collins. He knew that. Usually you try and, you know, if you have an outside receiver going deep, you try and get it to him in that Offside, situation. 91, defense. Still third down. Alfred Williams. 91 is Alfred Williams right there. And you see Walls is moving, which is okay. See, he was coming in motion, and then as the motion came, as Wesley Walls, number 85, came across, Williams was watching him, and he just took off more on Wesley Walls than he did on the snap of the football. Anthony Johnson is the deep back, and they go with three wide receivers. Collins back in the pocket, incomplete. In the direction of Wesley Wall. Got it one hand on it, but not a handle. Well, if Kerry Collins does have a favorite receiver, it's that guy right there, Wesley Walls, and I think he's going to be looking for him all day, but the only thing about that is the Broncos also know that. Ken Walter back to punt for Carolina, and Darian Gordon deep for Denver. Walter, the rookie from Kent State. Not his best. Gordon hit immediately. Cut down by Bates. Boy, that was a hit. It looked Whoa. like Gordon just caught that ball like he had free caught it. He didn't look like he even started to run. He just stood there and took that hit. And it was a pretty good hit. Nothing, nothing in the first quarter at mile high. It's the drive to succeed that makes a champion. Pitching in, fighting the battle as a team. Hanson, Big Ted Washington, Sean Moran moves inside, Bruce Smith, the All-Pro. Bryce Pop, John Holasek, and Rogers are the linebackers. Burr Smith, and seven from midfield. Three wide. Is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. With fares so low, you have the freedom to fly. By Mazda. Come see what happens when a car company has more engineers and fewer accountants. Mazda. By Priority Mail from the U.S. Postal Service. And by Texaco, a world of energy. Light snow, wet snow, not sticking, but steadily falling. The Mile High Stadium in Denver, first and ten for the Broncos. And Elway will throw on first down and does for Shannon Shaw. And got him a perfect throw. Let's look at the Bronco offense led by the unmatched John Elway, 15 years, 37 years old. In front of him, a good offensive line. Zimmerman, Slareth, Nalen, Diaz, Infante, and Jones. Darrell Davis and Howard give Griffith from the backs. Ron Smith and McCaffrey and Shannon Sharp, who just made that reception. And that's Sharp on the move. And Elway to throw it again. Gets it to Davis. And Davis gets another Bronco first down. Michael Barrow made the stop, and let's look at the Carolina defense. Under fire and under quick pressure from Elway already. Seals, Cragen, and Miller in front. Four linebackers, Lathan, Royal, Mills, and Barrow just made the tackle. And in the secondary, Poole and Davis, the corners, Minter, the rookie, and Coda, the safety man. First and 10, Denver. Spins for a couple. Some of the scores, earlier scores, Dallas beat Arizona. That was a must. The amazing Minnesota Vikings, 29-22 over the Bears. Washington beat Detroit 30-7. And Green Bay is in the fourth quarter, leading 17-7. I beg your pardon about the Washington score. 
Those are all finals except for the Kansas City Jacksonville. Second and seven. Saw some room and skipped through it. You know, last night we were talking to Eric Davis, and he was talking about Terrell Davis, and he says, you know, he's one of those guys that just kind of bleeds you slowly, and it's not that he's going to have a lot of breakaway runs or a lot of big runs, but it's five yards here, six yards here, four yards here, and he just keeps coming at you all day. And all of a sudden, he's got 175 or 200 yards. This has to be a pass. There's no one in the backfield. Quarterback quarterback that's the probably, old, that's probably one in the backfield. That's what they were probably trying to make them think. They took Terrell Davis, and they split him way out here in the left side, had no backs in the backfield. So you had to think, well, there's no one there to run the ball. But of course, with John Elway, there is one guy there to run the ball, and that's a quarterback. And he's a pretty capable runner. You know, they aren't doing a good job of keeping these footballs dry, though. I've noticed that they're just kind of putting them there and then leaving them there. We always had a rule on a, on a wet day like this that the center, it was his responsibility to never snap a wet football. Elway didn't make that. Didn't make it. About a foot short, Dom Capers, who's done such a wonderful job, and so has Mike Shanahan. And no Mike Shanahan, I know he's going to go for it, but Mike, Mike Shanahan is one of the most aggressive offensive coaches in the National Football League. But I'll tell you, he has his two backs here in the backfield this time. He's not, he's not going with that no one in the backfield. He might come up with another sneak, though. That, he has to. Elway got knocked backwards and lost did, the ball. Did you see Ray Seals on that one? They were waiting for that quarterback sneak again. When, when they gave him an empty backfield, they had a quarterback sneak. But watch Ray Seals, number 99. He just gets the penetration here. You see, when he goes in motion now, there's no one there. He starts to go to that side, and there's Seals right there, and he just knocks Elway right back. And knocked the ball loose, and Carolina recovered. Andre Royal came up with the ball. That was a heck of a hit. Welcome to the forefront of the economic revolution. This is the headquarters of the Palm Beach People's Party. It's more gift shop, really. Marks is back. That's what they were doing all night, staying up, making up signs. Box doesn't come here that often. They don't either. They were from Chicago, it says. <laughs> Flag on the play as Collins throws to Wesley Walls. Yeah, Kerry Collins could do that. I mean, he is a, a big, tall, strong quarterback, and he can stand tall in that pocket and find his tight end. Wesley Walls, again, a big target, his favorite target, and a guy that Kerry Collins is always going to be looking for. You know, going back to that Denver, that third yeah. and fourth down, I was surprised they didn't All run side. Terrell Davis there. Defense. The player over the center. Or surprised they sent him in motion and took away the threat of Davis. Here's a catch by Walls. Yeah, and here's here's Bill Romanowski on him. No one gets a hit on him coming off the line. And that's the thing that the Broncos were talking about that they wanted to do. They just let him come free off the line, and he ran a hook pattern right in front of Tyrone Braxton as strong safety. First and ten. That's Fred Lane. Left side, a couple of yards. Both teams have regulars, starters missing. Biabatuka, Biakabatuka, and Fox for Carolina. Brian Habib and Neil Smith for the Broncos. Yeah, Habib has a uh, lower back spasm. Neil Smith has a torn triceps muscle. And again, gets a couple. You know, it's a little different when when a, a, a defense game plans for you. And that's what the, the Denver Broncos have done. They have game plan to, to stop Fred Lane. Last week, uh, Fred Lane came into the game against the Oakland Raiders, and no one knew who he was. You know, it was kind of had a look at the program. Who's this number 32 guy? And they didn't know if that was his name or the college. I right. Mean, he's Fred Lane from Lane College. But this week, the Broncos know who Fred Lane is. And where he's from. And 
Anthony Johnson's the deep back this time. The blitz gets Terry Collins. It's Mobley. John Mobley came free right up the middle. John Mobley, probably the best defensive player in the Broncos. He lines up right here in the middle. You're going to see him right here. He comes in free. No one blocks him, but he has great acceleration, great explosion and speed. And he was on Kerry Collins before Kerry Collins could even get set. Walter back to punt his first punt, 38 yards, no return. He's done a good job. Rookie from Kent State. Check his hang time. Good enough. Darian Gordon got some room. And Gordon still on his feet, and he's going to go. He's going to score. No flag. Eighty two yard punt return by Darian Gordon. His second of the season for a touchdown. The, the, the punt before he stopped and got caught here. He's going to get this one. Now watch, once he makes this guy move, watch that picket fence form. He has that lane on that left side, and he gets this all there as a punter. The punter misses right there, and then Darian Gordon just runs it into the end zone. He made a couple of moves right at the beginning, and then he let that picket fence form for him, and then he got outside the fence. That's a fifth of his career. And Darian Gordon's 82-yard punt return puts Denver on top, 7-0. Everywhere. Punt returned by Darian Gordon. First kick ever returned against Carolina. Ever for a touchdown. In the history of the franchise. Those are the things that the Panthers have done so well. You know, yeah. field position, special teams, tackling defense, those kinds of things. Bates to return the kickoff. Michael Bates forced out of bounds at about the 26. Yeah, you had a punt. Him Kyer, excuse on me. a punt return back, you have a right, left, and middle. Here's Darren Gordon. He can go right, he can go middle, or he can go left. What this is is a left return. Now watch how they're kind of bunched up in here. This is perfect for a left return if he can pick up some block. Boom, one there, one here. You see, now he picks up those things. They free him. One right there. Then he's going to get another one right there. Boom. You see if they have the lane form. They know where they're going to go. That was called a punt return left in the huddle. And he set it up so perfectly by starting to his right. And the ball being punted to his yeah. right kind of set it up, too. First and ten at the reverse comes to Ray Carruth. Carruth taken down at the 30 by Ray Crockett. That had uh, some possibilities if it were not for Crockett. Uh, Ray Carruth, of course, is a, a popular player here, even though he plays for Carolina because he played college at the University of Colorado. He's the number one draft choice for the Carolina Panthers. So this is kind of a coming home for Ray Carruth. And that hit that Ray Crockett just put on him was a welcome back to Colorado, Ray. And not a very nice welcome. Second and seven. Anthony Johnson is the deep back. pass incomplete. Dropped by Johnson just as well. It would not have gone anywhere anyway. No, uh, Kerry Collins looks a little jumpy in the pocket yeah, to does. me. I thought that you know, you know that he was standing tall in the pocket like he did last year. And, and you remember he had that broken jaw when Bill Romanowski hit him. He has four plates in his jaw, two on either side, titanium plates. He had a surgery lasted four and a half hours and they brought him back earlier and he wasn't comfortable when he first came back and then they brought him back the second time he was starting to look more comfortable but he doesn't now and complete high intended for Ishmael four-man rush by Denver didn't get there but they did put some pressure on Collins yeah, and you know and he's and he's not comfortable back no. there I mean they are 
they are starting to get to him and I think you know that and the coverage and the rush and all those things and he's not standing tall back there and just throwing the ball and again it's, that's just the early start Darian Gordon who just brought one back 82 yards standing back at about the 27 yard line I think Carolina had to take a time out they there Pat. they only they only had 10 men on the field I wonder if they only had 10 on that return I don't know but this is a shaky start for the Carolina yes, Panthers as you said they've had a their first punt return in the history of their franchise against them for a touchdown they don't look comfortable on offense Dom Capers is so meticulous he keeps notes about every play after every play every circumstance that comes up so well, he, he doesn't forget anything he keeps win and loss and the you know in if three yards or more if on offense they get three yards or more it's a win three yards or less is a loss flag on the play Gordon will stay away from this one he still got the punter down back there and the punters rising in retaliation oh that's not the punter Damon Pierre who's blocks for the punter was involved in a little fracas back there. Personal foul holding. There was a takedown when we saw it. That was a takedown and there were three penalties out there. We got an ineligible member of the kicking team downfield, number 37. Also, we had holding number 27 of the kicking team. Both penalties are declined. First down. You just see, here's the holding right there. See, that was <laughs> yeah. a holding, but that a was... takedown, and then they stayed in that position. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about that. 7 nothing. Denver 7, Carolina nothing. 6.41 left in the first. Light snow has been falling all day. Snow mixed with rain. Two tight ends set up this time for the Broncos. That's Shannon Sharp in motion. And now way back to throw it. It's Shannon Sharp. And a Bronco first down. Elway can still bring it. Yeah, uh, he's just a thing of beauty. I mean, when you just watch him get get back there and throw the ball, here's Shannon Sharp coming across. Start as a tight end to right, comes across to the left, comes in motion, then comes up, then makes a move back to the inside. That's a lot of running to do, but that did change the whole formation. And watch Elway look the whole way, look at Shannon Sharp, find him, and the minute that he's open, he just drilled that thing in there. Davis. Straight ahead for one or two. Elway was saying something interesting about Terrell Davis yesterday that he couldn't remember that he had any negative yards any time this year. I don't know if that's true or not. Well, and then we talked to Terrell Davis after that and said, have you ever lost the yard? He goes, yeah, yeah, I've had some lost yard. But, you know, both of those guys are, are very honest and very refreshing football players that enjoy playing football. That's why they're good. One of the reasons, here's Davis. Breaks one tackle. Yesterday, we spoke to Terrell Davis about how playing with John Elway can make his job easier. John Elway, the name, helps me as a runner. Just when he's out there, his presence. John probably doesn't even have to throw the ball um, no more than uh, 15 times a game. But just his presence out there, I mean, he's a legend. People know what he can do. So just his presence out there would back people up off the running game. I mean, they have to respect his arm and still respect John as a player. He is a legend playing. Deservedly so. Panthers show blitz. No way. Gets it to Rod Smith. You know, it's that whole thing with John Elway. You know, there's something in a quarterback's mind where he sees something from the time he sees the guy until the ball leaves his hand. And whatever that thing is, John Elway has it quicker than anyone else. Watch him here. He's in the shotgun. But watch as he comes back. 
and now he sees Rod Smith, and he sees him, and how quickly that ball gets ball. out of there, and how short a time it stays in the air until it gets to Ron Smith. This guy, John Elway, is one amazing quarterback. What a quick arm. Rolled and looked at Davis. Now he's going to take off, and he can still do that. Everything was covered down there. That was one of Mike Shanahan's ideas that he thought against a zone blitzing team like Carolina is that you want to move the pocket. You want to get your quarterback out and some bootlegs, and you want to do that early, and that's exactly what he did with John Elway. You see, they expect if they're going to get any blitzing, they want it to the inside, and then they're going to take Elway and get him out to the outside where there's no Go blitzing around. or rushing. The only thing is, there was no there was no receivers open either. Right. Second and seven. Elway back to throw it. Rips it to Shannon Sharp and Sharp near a first down. And right now for a McDonald's game break, let's send you James Brown at the Fox Television Center in Hollywood. All right, it was a big day for Barry Sanders as you take a look at his patented moves. Nine straight seasons with a thousand yards rushing NFL record. Eight straight road games with a hundred plus yards NFL record. And moved in the third place all time rushing past Tony Dorsett. Although the Lions lost big day for Barry Sanders. Back to Pat and John. Denver seven. The Carolina Panthers nothing. Two tight ends. Third and very short. This time no sneak. They give it to Davis. And I don't know if Davis made the first down or not. I don't know. He tried to get in there behind David Diaz and Fonte and Tony Jones. Like I said, this is going to be another one of those things that it's where the officials place the ball. And they're going to have to measure this one. Or they say that they didn't make it. I think the Broncos are going to go for it again on fourth down. They're going to run it right in here. And you see they have, they have, they have a good solid line. There was no cutback. Terrell Davis was going to try and cut back to his left, and the Carolina Panthers played perfect gap control. There was no cutback. They need a couple of feet. And Elway is going to try to get it himself. Chased by Turnbull. Oh, I he didn't get it. He didn't I don't get think it. He got it. Nope, he didn't get that ball out there. That's it. That's the second time they got for it on fourth down. And again, you would think they would give it to Terrell Davis on fourth down. Both times on fourth down, they had John Elway keep it. First on the quarterback sneak, and this time on a bootleg. And neither time did he make it. And again, you're going to have both backs going this way, and then John Elway going to the right. You see, again, if he just had a little more speed, he would get out there. But one thing that the Panthers' defense do well is they really pursue. And they had them all there. Here was the quarterback sneak, the other fourth down. In fact, he fumbled Fumble. before he got to the line of scrimmage. Two fourth downs, two John Elway runs, no first down. And they still lead seven to nothing. 82-yard punt returned by Darian Gordon. To the fullback Scott Green, who might have gotten a yard and a half or so. Well, see, when you see number 27 up there, that's Steve Atwater, the free safety, and that means that there's eight men up there, and that means that they're ganging up on the run, and that's exactly what the Broncos are doing. They're ganging up on first down, and they're daring the Carolina Panthers to throw the ball. And if they're going to run, they have to run against eight men. And the expert guy is going to be that guy right there, Steve Atwater. Second and nine, two tight end setup. That's Walls in motion. And Collins back to throw. Swings it outside, incomplete, intended for Fred Lane. You know, this is what an eight man is. You know, we talk about eight men in a box. This is kind of how it works. You have your normal seven men up there like that. Then if you bring one of these two safeties up, like you bring him up there, then that gives you eight men in that square. And there's only seven blockers, so you're always going to have one free defensive guy. And on first down, that will usually be Steve Atwater. He's the guy who comes up, the safety man who comes up. But Steve Atwater is about 220, so he's like another linebacker, really. He's like you. He's out of Arkansas. Right. Collins passes complete. Close to midfield. And now they say it was not complete. He didn't have it. Ishmael up 
upset. Yeah, he was upset. The official tried to take the ball from him, and he grabbed it back. This man was going to come down here, number 81. You see, he's going to come in here and come under control, try and find a hole, work back to the ball. He did work back to the ball, and they said the ball hit the ground. I don't believe it did. Yes, well, it right did. There. Yes, it did. Yeah, he caught it, it first, loose. and then it, it, he didn't have control of it. He didn't. He didn't keep control of it. It hit the ground. Gordon says, "Stay away from this punt." It goes over his head and takes a Carolina roll down to about the eight and they'll down it there. Flag on the play. That's the type of play that Dom Capers is always looking for a play like that that will change field position. It was a good kick. And the penalty is against the Panthers. And this time the Broncos will. They'll make them kick it again. They'll take accept the penalty. Again, they had an illegal man downfield, I think. 23 of the kicking team illegally downfield. We'll penalize five yards and re-kick. Anthony Johnson. See, number 23 is, is on the line, and he's right here. Now, he cannot go until the ball is kicked. The two outside can, guys can go when it's snapped. But he can't go until it's kicked. You see him start before the ball's kicked. He's right here going downfield. That's the type of thing where you have to count 1,001, yep. 1,002, 1,003 and go. He, down, he counted like 1,001 go, 1,002 and three as he was going. That you know was a I mean. 64 yard punt. It was down to about the air. This is a bad snap. A good punt, but Gordon will have a chance with this one. Gordon, he's already brought one back, and he's going to bring another one back. Gordon, 75 yards this time. Another Denver touchdown. How do you think Anthony Johnson feels for Carolina? He was the guy that was illegally downfield on the great punt before. Now, that was a middle punt return. We saw Darian Gordon return a punt all the way on a punt return left, and that one they changed it up and they went to a punt return middle. This one is 70 yards. Well, watch it. It's here at the middle. He's going to take a step and straight up the middle. So you have right, you have left, and you have middle. We've seen Darian Gordon on two punt returns. The first one, punt return left. That one, punt return middle. Good running by Darian Gordon. Good blocking by the punt return team. That has to be approaching some records, all-time records. Well, we know one record it is. It's a, it's a record, a Carolina Panther record. Yeah, it sure is. The first two in their history. What a couple of spectacular runs by Darian Gordon and Denver leads 14-0. You're born, you go to school, and then one day... Starring Dustin Hoffman and Rene Russo here on NBC. Batted in the air. That's two deflections already for Van Pelt, who stands only six feet tall. Chad Eaton made the play. We go to New York. All right, Dick, at San Diego, unheralded Craig Wheelahan. Starting a quarterback for the injured Stan Humphreys, a 10-yard touchdown pass to Tony Martin. 14-0, San Diego with the lead on Seattle late in the first quarter. Dick? Thanks, Greg. Greg? We Three touchdowns in one game. There are eight players. He's the eighth to return two punts. He was a heck of a player, Darius Gordon. I remember him when he was at Stanford. Yeah. Drafted by the San Diego Chargers. Ended up here with the Broncos. Here's Michael Bates. Bates, good return out to the 37-yard line, where he's taken down by Randy Hilliard. And the Carolina Panthers take over there at their own 37 trailing 14 to nothing their defense has done a good job yeah their their defense has done a good job it's their special teams that are killing them and right. again you know even that punt before the punt return for a touchdown uh, they, they had, had a heck of a punt anthony johnson of course was penalized so they had to do it over again and then they got the punt return for a touchdown so it's 14 nothing but both touchdowns against their special teams 
to Fred Lane, and Lane gets his best gain of the day. Out to about the 45-yard line. Lane from Lane College. An enrollment of about, what do you say, 750 students? 750, yeah. He wasn't even going to go to college, and a friend of his dad's got the job at Lane College and says, why don't you come here and play football? And he was all ready to go to work. Look and, for uh, a job, yeah. It was going to be the end of his education. He went there and lo and behold, had a great career and ended up as a free agent with the Panthers. That's the end of the quarter. 14-0. Denver leads. I'm Kenny, a friend of Dick's. Miller Lite has asked me to find four cheerleaders to send to the Super Bowl. Here today is Maria from Corpus Christi, Texas, who claims she can perform perfect cheers in any weather. What do you think, America? Miller Lite. Could Maria be a cheerleader? Some people skip them, stack them, or just plain ignore them. Most explosive die hard of all comes to Fox with a vengeance. Bruce Willis and Samuel L. Jackson star in the network premiere of Die Hard with a Vengeance. Tuesday at 8, 7 Central on Fox. <laughs> think that horse knows it's snowing? Well, I think it's just, just said something. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Tempting. He ran right into big old 97 yeah. Mike Lotus on that play. Lotus is one of those guys that's been around, just kind of a veteran, tough guy who plays that run. In fact, they even yeah. take him out now. See, they put big old Lotus in there on, on first or second down in those running downs. And then when it gets to be another down, they give him a rest. If they think it's going to be a pass, they get some pass rushes in there. Met Mike Logis's dad yesterday at practice. He looks like he could still play the run. Collins. Pass is caught by Mark Carrier, and Carrier gets it into Bronco territory to their 37, where he's you know, forced out of bounds. You know, the Broncos only had 10 guys on defense that play. I don't know that Lotus was supposed to come out, because they only had 10 guys on defense. But yeah, that's a pretty good pass by Collins. You know, you get that third and two or three they like to be in that situation yep. but the Broncos don't like to be in too many of those 10 man, ten man situations there's Collins on first down back to throw get through the hands of Fred Lane taking a glance around the league Fox notes Trent Dilfer Two touchdown passes today, 16 for the year. The Cowboys get two rushing touchdowns today. That's the first time that's happened in nine games for them. Brett Favre had his first 300-yard-plus passing game this season. You know, you talk about passing in the snow, there's a guy that can do Brett Favre. Oh, he can make a lot of things happen. And he says he can never understand. Everyone said he plays so well in the snow and cold weather. He said, heck, he's from Mississippi, and he doesn't know why. A lot of times, I don't know why. That's Ray Carruth on that reverse again. Knocked out of bounds at about the 31-yard line by Aldridge. That's one thing about these Denver Bronco linebackers. They're good tacklers. And Adam they can Aldridge all run. The title, Bill Romanowski and John Mobley. You see here, here, right here is Aldridge, and he sees now, he sees that Carruth is coming around. Now, what he does, he's not even in the picture. You see, you lose him in the picture because... He doesn't run at Carruth. He runs at an angle of where Carruth is going to be, and he meets him at the crossroads. Third and four walls again on the move. A lot of wide receivers. Collins looking downfield and throwing downfield and has a man. That's Mark Carrier, and that's one of the reasons he came back. And that was a heck of a job by Kerry Collins. He was trying to throw it to Rocket Ismail, who fell down. Yep. And he started to throw it to Ismail. Ismail falls down, and then he comes back. Carrier 
remarkably held on to this. Yeah, you see right here, here was Ismail. After he fell down, then he had to come back to Carrier, who was his second receiver. Watch Ismail. He was a primary receiver. Here, here's where he was going to throw it. You see, and he fell down trying to make that out cut. Collins brings the ball back and then gets it in there to Carrier. A real hit taken by Mark Carrier or applied by Frankston. Nike Play Corps presents. They told the coaches of Nike Play Corps. By Saturn, a different kind of company, a different kind of car. By Aflac, insuring over 40 million people worldwide. And by Die Hard, America's most trusted battery. Die Hard. What's under you? First down, Carolina. Collins. Quick throw outside to Ishmael. Knocked out of bounds at about the 11. Yeah, Kerry Collins is four out of 10 now, but you can feel him in this second quarter get more comfortable. Yeah. I thought that he was a little jumpy, a little shaky in that first quarter, but on this drive here, he starts, he, he's looking like he's starting to settle down. Mark Carrier back in the line, my, lineup. Ishmael goes out, second and two, an eight yard pickup on that first. This is one of the areas Dom Capers said they had to score when they get inside the red zone. That's Lane and his pop backwards. The ball came loose and Denver has it. Alan Aldrich on this series made two great plays. We saw him tackle Ray Carruth earlier and Alan Aldrich, the middle linebacker, number 57, is the guy that made that hit on that one. 14-0 Denver, and they have the ball. Listen, when I look at this car, it's the same way. Doing a nice job of the changeup on Jason Seymour. Oh, no, 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 no. Willie Davis in motion. They keep it on the ground with Eddie George, and right now let's head to Hollywood for this McDonald's team break with James Brown. Kenny and Pam, take a look at this. Carolina had to re-kick this because of an illegal man downfield. To Darian Connor of Denver, no, this is not a replay. This is his second punt return for a score, 75 yards. Second guy this season to have two punt returns for a TD. The other, Eric Metcalf. Back to Kenny and Tim. Well, JP, I should have known. Just. I'm glad you said this isn't a replay. I thought you just made a mistake and we're running the same thing over. Four. You should have known, right? Harvard guy. <laughs> Four wide receivers for the Oilers. As the game fires, it is picked off. Corey Whitmer. ...to evaporate. Watch Alan Aldrich here, and you're going to see a hit. This is his gap. He has this gap. Now watch what happens. The ball comes in this gap. Watch it. He takes that gap, and does he unload on Freddie Lane? And Mobley made the recovery. Elway gives to Davis. Davis gets out to about the 20. Greg Cragen stripped him up. You know, all the things that Dom Capers was talking about yesterday, you know, good special teams, uh, uh, your ball control, uh, getting inside the 20 and scoring touchdowns. So far in this first half, they haven't done any of those things. You know, and he's always talking about efficiency, and his teams are very efficient. But yes. Again, they, they, they haven't been efficient. Such a fundamentalist. Zellway again to Davis. Davis is hit at the line of scrimmage by Coda. Chad Coda. And we talked about an eight-man up, and now Steve Atwater on the Broncos was the eight-man up. Well, Chad Coda is the same thing. I mean, here's a, here's a guy, he only weighs about 198 pounds he's under 200 pounds but he hits like a linebacker and 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 when they and when they want to load up on the running game and they want to bring a guy up it's that guy chad coda they bring him up and that time he was at the line of scrimmage two tight ends set up for denver that's sharp in motion and elway is back to throw it time gets it to shannon sharp midfield coda made the stop well, if John Elway has a go-to guy in this game, it's Shannon Sharp. Shannon Sharp, again, we see him starting on the right side, going in motion, coming across to the left side. 
coming up, making a little move to the outside and then coming back to the inside. And John Elway hitting him perfectly right on stride. Pretty good move to the outside. And the guy that he made that move on was Chad Cota. Yep. First down, Denver, just in their own territory. Their own 49. McCaffrey in motion. And after he got a yard, baby. Michael Barrow tripped him up. Just watch John Elway on that last pass to Shannon Sharp. Just find him there. I mean, he's looking, and then he has to find his receiver as he looks downfield. Shannon Sharp. Then he has to find a lane to throw it in. And on that one, he found everything. Do you see Sharp watch that ball all the way in? I think, you know, John Elway still puts a lot of velocity on it, and you better watch it all the way because it's not going to be as many times getting there. It's going to hurt you. Elway, and here comes the place. And the rush forced Elway to step up, and Cragen brought him down. Yeah, he was an old teammate. Remember yeah. Craig Cragen for years? He was a nose tackle here with with the Denver Broncos, and then and then he was going to retire for several years. And then he then he then he came back and uh, and had a heck of a year last year with the Carolina Panthers. He's really not for your prototype, not big enough to play in the middle of the line, but he's been getting it done for a long time. He's never been big enough. He wasn't big enough at Amador High School in Pleasanton. He wasn't big enough at Utah State. He wasn't big enough in Denver, and he's not big enough in Carolina. But he's still playing. He's just an overachiever yeah. you know, who works hard and is a tough guy and has all those things. Ball start. Flag Number of the 63, play. Offense. Prior to the snap. Against David Diaz down. and Ponte. David Diaz Infante again is playing for Brian Habib, who is a normal starting right guard. You're going to see Diaz Infante there. Although they could have called Tony Jones a right tackle yep. because he's lined up in the backfield. But you saw Diaz Infante just start moving back a little before the ball was snapped. Three wide receiver package with Shannon Sharp. That's like another one. Here's Elway. Did he get the first? I tell you, Pat Terrell was right there on him, number 40. I mean, that was that was just John Elway and Shannon Sharp. Now, it's Shannon Sharp's responsibility to get beyond the first down marker. He has to know where it is, and he has to run the pattern. And right there, when he turns, that has to be. He has to be at the depth of a first down. If he's not, that was Shannon Sharp's fault. He's very close. And so far in this first half, these Broncos haven't had good success on fourth down. No, have they? they haven't. If, if it is a first down, Shannon Sharp did a nice job. If it's not, he didn't do a good job. Shannon Sharp did not do a good job. Look at that ball come in there, though. He gets with, there in a hurry, he doesn't he? With each third, Eric Davis was saying, Last night, that when John Elway throws the ball, he's one of the few guys he's ever heard it as it zipped past his ear. Well, they're going to go for it again. I would guess that John Elway does not run this. I would guess you're yeah. right. Fourth and inches. He's waiting for a play. He doesn't look like he has it yet. Well, they're a little confused. They're going to have to take a timeout. Yeah. Yeah, he says not. He must like have. His speaker in his helmet must not be working or something because he's looking for a signal from the sideline. Or maybe he didn't like what he heard, but I think they better keep these two guys in the backfield, and I would think you hand it to Terrell Davis. That would be my choice. I don't know if he got it or not. He didn't get it. And the guy that made it is number 71, Greg Craigan. Craigan. He was there. Greg Craigan got penetration. He did get it. Well, if he did it, then that's a heck of a spot. It is, because he was hit and knocked backwards. Watch Greg Craig in here. He's going he's gonna to get the penetration. You see, he's going to come right down the line in that gap, and he hit Terrell Davis in the, in, in the backfield, and he knocked him sideways. Oh, he'd be yeah. a double team here, if too. You look, if you look right down the line where that first down marker is, I don't know how he got it unless they gave it to him right at the end when he spun and went forward there. Because right there, he's going sideways, sideways, and unless they gave it to him somehow at the end, I'm not sure. That's a heck of a play by Cragen. Here's Elway back 
to throw. And the, the rush from Carolina gets him. Les Miller was there. And right now for a McDonald's game break. Let's again return to James Brown at the Fox Television Center in Hollywood. Pat and John, take a look at the ex-basketball player Ricky Dudley tied in for Oakland on the receiving end of that pass from Jeff George. 52-yard reception. That set up the score for Harvey Williams and Oakland leading the Saints by a touchdown. Back to Pat and John. Second down. They need 18 for a first. The original line of scrimmage and again a good game by Vaughn Hebron. He's a great change of play uh, uh, pace Vaughn Hebron is. I mean he comes in Terrell Davis is a great running back and then you bring Hebron in and he can make some big plays for you. you got a little turf. Oh I love that look. I mean, Over that, the ear hole. That, that, that to me is a good picture when a guy gets up with, <laughs> with turf in his ear hole and snow coming down you know in a wet field and little frozen feel. This is football. This is what it's all about. Yeah. The Broncos got to eat. Three wide receivers. Elway out of the shotgun. Chased again. Pass. A diving catch. And it's going to be another one of those fourth and shorts. Rod Smith made the catch. Although Shannon Sharp was wide open right away and John Elway couldn't get the ball to him. Good rush by the Panthers. Made him readjust. Watch Shannon Sharp here, Pat. See, he gets a little pick and he breaks free right up the middle. Elway didn't see him. And if he would have hit him on the run, Shannon Sharp could have gone a long way. Fourth Mike, and short again. And Mike Shannon said, I've had enough of that going for it on fourth down, so we're going to kick one here. Jason yep. Elam. Now Denver takes a timeout. 54 left until the half. Toasters are guaranteed for about a year. Refrigerators, about five. A mowing. The Broncos lead Carolina 14 to nothing. Yeah, they're doing an interesting thing here, Pat. The officials uh, during this timeout are coming out and they're measuring for the first down to, to show them how much they have to go, although it looked like Mike Shanahan decided he was going to kick anyway. The field goal team was on the field. They're still on the field. Yeah, so I think the officials just wanted to uh, excite that crowd and show them, <laughs> look, that's all he has to go, and he's not going for it. Did you say excite or insight? Huh? Oh. Yeah, now here comes. Maybe Mike Shanahan did ask for that. Maybe, maybe, maybe they maybe took so. the time out. Maybe he wanted to see exactly how short that fourth and short was. They need about a foot and a half. Well, we Yep, he's tried. He's tried John Elway on a quarterback sneak. Now John Elway's coming over here to talk to him. John Elway's not in the huddle. You'll see him coming back there. Here he comes right there. They just got it the last time they had fourth he, and short. He's still not sure. John Elway's still signaling stuff to the sideline. Now he's coming back over again. Look at him. He can't hear. That's what he's saying. Or maybe he maybe doesn't, he doesn't like believe it. it. Yeah. I, I, they, they could have called his number again. He said he tried it in the middle once. He tried it to the outside once. But Ralph Davis tried it in the middle once. Terrell Davis just barely made it. He made it this time to the 30. I think they found that that inside wasn't the place to go. That maybe, you know, take it to the outside, get it outside here rather than straight up the middle. Let them do all that stuff in the middle, lead in the middle, find a soft spot right out there. And that's what Terrell Davis did. And then just get down and get the first down. See, pretty good block and stand them up there. All there was was Sam Mills left and it was one on one. Terrell Davis and, and Sam Mills for the first down. Terrell Davis got it. There at the Panther 30, and Elway rolls right down to Davis. Beg your pardon, it was Howard Griffin. Yeah, that's that old bootleg where they get the fullback out there quickly. That's an old San Francisco 49er play. Of course, Mike Shanahan may have put that in for the 49ers when he was the offensive coordinator there. 
as Mills, who made the stop on Griffith. You know, in talking to, remember a, a, a week ago, Steve Young, and, you know, and then talking to John Elway today, they both said that the most aggressive play caller they've ever played for is Mike Shanahan. Mike Shanahan. Shanahan. Sam Mills has done a heck of a job for a long time. Davis this time. They caught the Panthers in a blitz up the middle that time. I think John Elway is perfect, isn't he? Isn't he like like, like yep. nine for nine? John Elway is yet to throw an incomplete pass, and this is where this Bronco offense kills you. You know, is very it, efficient. Is it you gang up and you say they got a great runner in Terrell Davis? Well, they got John Elway, and they say, well, we got to stop John Elway, and they hand it to Terrell Davis. So you really are in a bind defensively. Third down, shotgun formation. Play. Rod Smith had it, juggled it, lost it. And now we'll see Jason Elam. As we're falling all over the field, I saw an official fall right down here in front of us. He started to go. Rod Smith was falling. The official was falling. Looked like all fall down. 2.55 left to play in the first half. Elam is 14 out of 18 with a long of 53 yards for the year. Tom Ruin, the punter, is the holder. This Carolina Panther defense is playing well there. They're, they're a very scrap, scrappy group. There's not a lot there. 42 yards out. No good. Far enough, but wide right. And so Kerry Collins and the Carolina Panthers will have a chance to operate before halftime. it can do for today's software. As you can see, they really got a kick out of it. Central on Fox. 14 0 Denver over Carolina. 250 left to play in the first half. We'll give you this again in a moment. The Panthers are ready. First and ten at their own 33. Collin taken down. He did a remarkable job to hold on to the ball. Sano Bassa. Made the stop. Bonavassa has great quickness. You're going to see him in there. You see, he starts to the outside, and then he just makes a spinner move. Yep. And as he as he makes that spinner move, it's against Matt Campbell. Campbell had a block. Bonavassa starts, and, and and then he gives that spinner move and comes out to the inside. Three wide receivers. They said yesterday, Bonavassa has a great motor. And it's always running. It was spinning that time. Pass is low intended for Carrier. Now let's go back and look at that Aplac, Aplac trivia question again. Who is the only NFL player to be active while his son played college football? That means that he probably has to have been playing football for a long time, the father. Yes, and it does. Had the son 
at a pretty young age. So you, that's kind of a little more of him. Amazing, yeah. amazing logic. Three-man rush. Collins on third down. Three-man pressure forces him out. Intended for Wesley Walls. Incomplete. And the Panthers will have to regroup at halftime. Yeah, they've really, you know, they really played pretty well on, yeah. on on defense. You look at that 14 to nothing. And of course, those were two Darian Gordon punt returns for touchdowns. 182, 175, and have, there he is. Because they they battled well on defense. They haven't battled well in this area right here. Their punt team against the Bronco punt return team. This is an area where they, they really take pride in too. This is a good kick. The hang time is going to be excellent. Gordon signals fair catch, makes it. The other two punts were 4.6 hang time. That should be good enough for the coverage teams to be down there. Someone's but knocked out. Yep. Yeah. Teammates sponsored by the U.S. Army. Be part of our team in the Army. Norb Turner's Washington Redskins have been paced by quarterback Gus Verratt and wide receiver Michael Westbrook. The Westbrook leaping touchdown, Washington Redskins. The fast-rising Redskins, a force to be reckoned with in the NFC's Eastern Division. Good job, line. Keep it going, huh? Okay, right. It's freezing. It's quiet. But you get used to it. You grow to love it. Snow Fox 2-1. This is Snow Fox base. This is Snow Fox 2-1. Then a storm comes up. And I'm the one who's got to get us out of here. And I remember who gave me courage. This is for them. For my mom and dad, who never missed a game. For Drill Sergeant McCardle, who showed me what it takes to be a leader. Visual contact, Sergeant. And for myself, who became one. Every once in a blue moon, something new comes along that scrambles your preconceptions and turns out to be a whole new omelet. Like whoever thought you could say luxury car and fun in the same sentence. Well, we did. In fact, we said it in one word. Katerra. A proud new addition to our luxury family. It's the caddy that zigs. All right, Artie, you going out for this one? Huh, let's go. Let's do it. Let's watch Dwight Stone on that on that last punt coverage. Here he is, like he's going to get double team. Then he comes inside. Watch Derek Lavelle hits him right there. So it's really triple team. Lavelle stays on him, doesn't know it, but Dwight Stone is out now. Watch him as he tries to stand up there. He goes down. Then he tries to get up again, and he goes down again. And that time he stayed down. And that's why the outside man on the punt coverage didn't get there. Dwight Stone was the outside guy, and he's explaining now, I had two guys on me. I was trying to get away from a double team, and a third guy came, I Derek Lavelle. I didn't see him coming. Well, you wouldn't expect when you were getting double team to be getting triple team. So Dwight Stone, there was one guy that they weren't going to let get down the field on that punt. It was Dwight Stone. They were making sure of that. <laughs> yeah, and they were sure of that. Three wide receiver set up for Denver. <laughs> Elway gets it out to Shannon Sharp. And Sharp down the sideline, stepped out of bounds at about the 40-yard line of Carolina. And the Panthers are going to have to make an adjustment on Shannon Sharp. That's the sixth pass that he's caught. Here he's up in the line of scrimmage this time. He's just running a crossing pattern. He goes underneath the linebackers. He runs it right at the official, underneath the linebackers. And there's no one in that zone over in the other side. You know what happens, John, is that they can't get any pressure off from the front three, so they rush the linebackers. And then they rush the linebackers, and then and then Shannon Sharp goes in that area that right. they just left. Right. Shannon Sharp. Fumble. Elway fumbled the exchange with his center, and he got it back. I wonder if those footballs are starting to get a little wet now. Well, it's not it's coming down as hard as it was earlier by any means. The snow and the rain 
still a light mist as Elway takes a timeout and comes over to the sideline. Save $100 on professional installation. So what are you waiting for? If you feel the need for speed... This guy is flying. Think again. There he goes. Oh, my the God. The world's scariest police chases three, Thursday at 9, 8 central. Watch this. The center, Tom Nalen, doesn't get the ball up. What you want to do is hit this front hand or up hand. This ball hits John Elway's backhand and goes right through. You see, you want to slap it up into the up hand. It goes right through the bottom hand. So that was the center's fault, Tom Nalen, for not getting it up. That'll make it second and 12. No way out of the shotgun this time. Fires. Shannon Sharp is wide open. And Sharp is at the six. Pat Terrell made the stop. It'll be first and goal, Denver, at the six. Here's Shannon Sharp, and he just runs such good patterns. I mean, he's big and he's strong. He just gets by a guy, and he knows that when he gets by a guy, he can look back for John Elway, and John Elway is going to find him because he's always looking for Shannon Sharp. Seven catches, 154 yards for Shannon Sharp. And the Panthers came in a blitz that last time. Flag on the play. A minute and eight seconds left. I was saying on that play there, Shannon Sharp, Terrell Davis did a good Ball job start, of picking up a blitz. 84, offense, wide to the snap. Yeah, Still Shannon Sharp. And he was playing so well this yeah. first half. Yeah. What else? There's Shannon Sharp right here. And you see that he's going to move. You see him starting to move right there before the ball yep. was snapped got to be tired. I think so, and when you get tired, you lose a little concentration, and that's all that was. Exactly right. I bet that seven catches, 154 yards. That's a big game. Here's Elway, quarterback draw. He's down at the 10-9, maybe, and immediately calls timeout before he gets up. Nick Shanahan wants a timeout. Again, that Aflac trivia question, who's the only NFL player to be active while his son played college football? And the answer is, of course, he's playing. Well, I wait on the answer. There they are, Sam Mills, Jr., and Sam Mills the third, defensive back at Montclair State. Of course, Montclair State is where Sam Mills, Jr. played also. Right. He said he's really proud of him. He said, but it's tough. He said to go and watch your son play corner when you know he's out there in an island and if he ever gives up a play, it's going to be a big play. And he's a freshman starting at Montclair State. Sam in the bye week went there to watch him. John Elway went to watch his son Jack play last night or yesterday, yesterday afternoon morning. after yesterday practice. morning. Yeah, and he said he's an eight-year-old and he's a, a quarterback and a linebacker. He said he's a pretty good quarterback, but... Not very good at linebackers, so John Elway gives him a dollar for every time he makes a tackle. Yeah. I'm not going to go the rest of five <laughs> okay. and ten. John Elway would get too many letters. Yep. On second down, Elway back to throw it to the end of the end zone. And incomplete, a juggle by Willie Green, who was up high enough to make the reception, but just couldn't hang on. Not quite. Willie Green usually makes those kind of plays. He doesn't have a great deal of speed, but but he is a, a big guy that can jump. And, you know, you know, and has a pretty good feel. You see, he just gets there to the back, to the end line there. He does get up. He yep. does get both hands on the ball. He just can't keep a hold of it. The jar knocked it loose. The jar of him coming down after that leap. And then he almost had it the second time, yeah. and then it was knocked out. Of course, Willie Green played for the Panthers last year. On third down. Elway. Tries to get it out to Davis, who was open. Well, I don't had to jump a couple of guys. He might have been over the line of scrimmage. I don't know that he wasn't over the line of scrimmage. I think he got away with one there. 
But that was a pretty good jump for a guy that's been in the league 15 years. I think if you look at the line of scrimmage, it's right in front of the line there. So if he passes that 10-yard line by much, look at that. That's a heck of a move. If he goes by it, no, he didn't. He's okay. No, he was okay. I would think if, you know, that a guy that's been playing in this league for 15 years would know a heck of a lot more about it than me. The field goal is good from 25 yards out by Jason Elam. Coming up on the Dockers Khakis halftime report, JB and Terry will bring you the scores and highlights from around the league. Also, our Fox Sports ticker will have up to the second stats. That's all coming up on the Dockers Khakis halftime. JB and Terry. And the early games. 17 nothing here at Mile High Stadium. I was trying to figure out what that is. That's the Bronco. Colorado Rocky Jacket. Now these people, are, you, know, you know, they're used to this. I mean, they come out here and sit in a snowstorm, and the secret is, I think, they know how to dress. I mean, they don't all dress the same. I mean, sometimes yeah, it's stuff you put on your head, and sometimes it's over your ears and your eyes, and what you put on your feet, and all that. But you know, when you've been around and you and you live in the Mile High City, and you been a Bronco fan and you come to a lot of games you know how to dress for this oh, kind sure. of weather and they all ask you how do you like our weather yeah, and I've, I've been coming to Denver long enough to know that it's one of those places if you don't like it stay around a while and you'll get something you like or stay away you see they were all given a salute there that's that yep. mile high salute it means it means you're a good soldier we're saluting this stadium, this team, this city. Neil Smith. Players saluting each other. Gary Collins. 17 nothing. His team trails as he gets some last minute conversation with Dom Capers. I think that you know that they're probably going to try and take a couple shots here because they do have good field position. Sometimes you just want to go in and regroup, but. I think when you're on the other side of the 40, you want to take some shots. Oh, I think so, too. Maybe they decided not to. Anthony Johnson, the ball carrier, gets about six. Yeah, if they take time out, they do. See, and they yeah. are taking time out because they did have uh, one time out, or they have two timeouts left. You know, and if you look at how this game happened or what this is all about, it's about Darian Gordon here. This, this, is, this is the first punt return. 82 yards, this one. And that was the punt return left, and they set up a nice wall on that left side. And you think, well, he can't do it twice, Kenny. Of course, again, here, now, this is a punt return middle. On all punt returns, you have four things. You have a block, a punt return middle, a punt return right, and a punt return left. And Shannon Sharp, seven catches, 154 yards, needs some oxygen. Well, you know, that's the other thing. You're talking about, you know, being able to dress here. If you're a player, you have to know how to get oxygen back in you because they keep reminding you you're at a mile high. Collins intended for Carrier well over his head. Maybe the best protection he's had yet. Now that hasn't been too big a problem. I think it's 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 being able to get first downs and to, and to get guys open and to, and and they have no running game at all. I know last night talking to Dom Capers, he expected that they would get a running game. Yep. And then that's what we have to do to win. And then if you can get a running game, then you can go play pass and all those other things. But they've had no running game. On third down, here comes the Denver Blitz. Complete as carriers banged around between the Denver linebackers. Romanowski better watch out there. That was that was close to being a late hit there. We were talking about the Panthers. They've only they've only gained 26 yards rushing, and and that's not Panther football. I mean that you know not being able to run, and of course those special teams are the things that have caused this 17 nothing deficit. Darian Gordon stayed up. Oh, about 20 yards away from the line of scrimmage. Now he backs up a little bit as Walters back to punt it. And it'll go.
go over Gordon's head and back toward the end zone and go into the end zone so they'll bring it out to the 20 where the Broncos will take over. They've, they're out of timeouts. So they'll probably just uh, do insignificant things. You know, Mike Shanahan was saying yesterday that the Broncos haven't had a, a, a breakout game yet. I mean, they haven't had what he thought was a perfect game there. They're eight and one. They have the best record in the AFC. They, along with the San Francisco 49ers, have the best record in the NFL. But I think that they're getting pretty close. I yep. mean, this first half is is pretty darn good. When you take offense, defense, and special team, you can't play too much better than the Broncos have played. Elway takes a knee, and they'll head for the locker room. Gary Collins heads for the locker room. A frustrating first half for him and his teammates. For Darian Gordon, a record-tying performance. 185-yard punt return, 175. 182, I should say, 175. So that's the end of the first half with the score. Denver 17, Carolina nothing. Fox NFL Sunday will continue with the Dockers Khakis halftime after these messages and a word from your local Fox station. Tuesday Mega Movie Night begin this Tuesday. There's a bomb in a school. With Bruce Willis and Samuel L. Jackson in the network premiere of the $300 million blockbuster. Yippee Kai. Die Hard with a Vengeance. Then Tuesday, November 18th, two left. 10 3 at the half. Dennis Smith got a growing pull, didn't know if he would play. Looked awfully good today. Troy Aikman back, looking for Miller. Needed to get Miller involved in the offense. Great catch, 51 yard reception, down to the one yard line. Eventually led to a touchdown by Emmett Smith. Now look at this more catch. Right foot, left foot. Should have been called good, but side judge Tommy Moore said it wasn't any good. Tobin pitched in the fifth, had every right to. Emmett Smith, second touchdown of the year, up the middle. Cowboys looking awfully impressive as they even their record at 5-5, five and 24-6 five, to six over the Cardinals. Barry Sanders, big day, historic day. A milestone, he passes Tony Dorsett for third place on the league's career rushing list with this run right here at the point those skins are up by three. Then Barry, 51-yard touchdown run. To the left, back to the right. Don't chase him. Wait on him. He'll be back in a minute. All the way down. There you have it. 100 yards rushing nine times now. He is in nine straight seasons. 100, 100, I mean, 1,000 yards rushing on the year. Get it out, Terry. We Matt know London, I know what I mean. Darrell Pounce picks off Matt London, returns 22 yards. Skins are back 6-4 as they win 30-7. Johnson big in Minnesota. Why? Here's why. Can throw the football. That's why. Pump fake safety out of there. Guns it. David Palmer picks it up. Seven-yard touchdown reception. We're all tied up at 7-all. And then Eric Kramer looking for Ricky Pearl. Good job. Corner comes up. Safety gets over flat. There's a 59-yard touchdown reception. Vikings 21, Chicago 19. And then Leroy Horde goes in for the one to put the Vikings ahead. There you have your final. 29-22, Minnesota at home over the Bears. Green Bay Packers tied at the top of the NFC Central. Victory over the Rams today. Dungy team still in contention. Trent Dilford really coming on strong. Has now thrown for 16 touchdown passes after this game. But Ward Dunn takes a handoff from his 30 yards. It's 31 to 10 as the Bucks take care of the Falcons. 31 to 10 the final. Miami's Jimmy Johnson looking for a sweep. Set up. Have we talked about his quick release? No. There it is. Corner out down the sideline. Brett Perriman. 23-yard touchdown reception. There you have it. His first as a Dolphin. It's 10 Jets, 14 Dolphins. And then George, remember this guy, George Steak, former number one draft choice by the Green Bay Packers out of Alabama, who lost to Louisiana Tech. There you have it. Bill Parcells, Jets lose to Jimmy Jop, Don, Johnson's Dolphins two times this year, 24-17. Had to get that Louisiana Tech in Absolutely. there, Absolutely. Huh? Patriots trying to snap a three-game skid leading 17-3 at the half. Jacksonville big over the Chiefs, 24-10 today. Mike Shanahan, all the smiles in the snow at mile high. Got a bad rushing defense, worried about his special teams. Remember now, Eric Metcalf last week against Cincinnati, the Chargers, he returned two punts for touchdown. Darren Gordon says, hey, I can do that. Up the middle, bounces to the outside. This one covers 82 yards. Denver up by seven. Hey, why kick to him again? Shame on 
on you. Back up the middle, got a block in the back. They didn't see that. That's okay if you can get away with it. Down the sideline, JB. He rumbles 75 yards. Say it ain't so. Broncos all over the passing. 17 to zip. All right, Panthers haven't beaten a winning team this year. I thought you said Oakland was going to lay down. I didn't say that. If I did, I was asleep. Dudley, love this guy out of Ohio State. He can run for a big tight end. Good catch there from Jeff George, having a great season. There's the argument from Dick. Settle down, Mike. Ain't no big deal. 10 to nothing at the half. Raiders over the Saints. All right, San Diego nursing a touchdown lead over the Seahawks. That at the half. Indianapolis trying to win a game. Not happening today. They lose it 28-13. Boy, you worked on my shoulders. We got more coming your way in just a bit. <laughs> hey, that hurts. Vince Lombardi, George Hallis, and now... Time for one last play, Coach. Hold on, I'm working it out. A new legend is born. Shockers have time continues after That's the over five years, by the way. <laughs> You're watching Fox NFL Sunday. A lot of industry experts told us that the passenger side was the best place to add a third door. We got still more advice insisting that the driver's side was the only logical choice. But as you can see, we let it all go right in one ear and out the other. Introducing the new Dodge Ram Quad Cab. The rules have changed. The objective is this Veterans Day sale. Three strategic days for big savings, 0% interest for six months. Be there. There's no excuse to miss the low prices this Smith Veterans Day sale. Maytag Super Capacity 2-Speed 10-Cycle Washer, now only $399. Hot Point by GE, 18 cubic foot refrigerator, now just $397. RCA Big 25-inch color TV with remote control, now only $239. To honor those who serve with a big Veterans Day sale, best furniture, appliance, and electronics, that too. First, there was the flavored tortilla chip. Now there's new Pringles Pop-Ums. New Pop-Ums is big tortilla taste concentrated in little bite-sized shapes. Tortilla taste so intense, you can forget the dip. And the mess. New Pringles Pop-Ums in nacho cheese, original and tangy ranch for a new tortilla experience. on the option play and then he came up with the big interception however the Giants offense was unable to capitalize on either of those the only Giants points coming off of the nice two-minute drill that Danny Cannell engineered to get down and Brad DeLuiso kicking a field goal right at the end of the half the cards on Fox where style In a preseason meeting between these two teams, Kerry Collins, as you see warming up right now, was suffered a broken jaw when he was hit by Bill Romanowski. Yesterday, we had a chance to talk to both parties about that incident. After it happened, it was out of my mind. You know, uh, you know it was an unfortunate thing that, uh, you know, Kerry got hurt on the play and he broke his jaw. But in no way whatsoever was there any intent. I was just playing hard-nosed football. And, uh, you know, it was, like I said, just an unfortunate thing. But it's out of my mind. It was, it was a good, aggressive play. It was a perfect hit. I was turning at the right time. He was coming in up free. Uh, you know, I'm tall. He, had, he only had to duck his head a little bit and, and, and hit me there. So, you know, all the circumstances there were perfect and right for, you know, such a violent hit. But, you know, that is part of the game. It, it is a violent game. And, uh, you know, it's something that... You know, I never, I never thought badly about it. I never thought that that was, uh, you know, something that, um, you know, I thought was cheap or unnecessary. There are the two, Romanowski on the right, Kerry Collins on the left. As snow starts to fall down again at Mile High Stadium. You know, and, and remember that incident yeah. when they, when they had that incident, the. The league fined uh, Bill Romanowski $20,000. He appealed that, and uh, well, there was no penalty. Yeah, called on the no. play.
Holmgren feels the plug was already pulled by one of his favorite players, quarterback Sean Springs. The coach feels Springs prolonged absence from the lineup for a hamstring injury and a four-game suspension for using illegal steroids has hurt the Seahawks' chances of playing more than a 16-game season. I don't care that he's back in the locker room. Really. I needed him on the field. I've needed him on the field all season. I'm always in coaching dog. <laughs> you must say, I stay in this dog house. You know. <laughs> Sean Springs, I'm mad at right now. He's still one of my favorite guys I've ever coached, though. So I love him. But he's like, you know, my, my kids. I get mad at them, too. You know? <clears throat> I can't. There's a way to, there was a way to avoid this. I'm quite sure Coach is mad at me, and he's mad at a lot of things, but uh, yep. I don't think, uh, I think we still have a great relationship, and I think it's all will work out. NFL has fined Steelers wide receiver Hines Ward 10 grand for taunting former Steeler and Ravens safety Rod Woodson. The fine was Ward's second this season. Bucks have signed kicker Doug Bryan for Saturday's game against the Ravens because of a hamstring injury that will prevent Martin Gramatica from playing. And ESPN.com's Len Pescarelli is reporting that the Bears have began to examine the possibilities of acquiring Patriots quarterback Drew Bledsoe while nothing is imminent. Pescarelli reports the Bears are looking into details of Bledsoe's current 10-year, $103 million deal. And the Mets were able to rework Mo Vaughn's contract, so the Vaughn for Kevin Apier deal.